even Sojourner Truth, when they tried to make it seem like she was a feminist. And that's another thing. See, the, the, the white feminist movement, even with the white LGBT movement, they always have to latch themselves on to us in order to, to bring any kind of validity to their movement. They have to, because a group of people in the dominant white society who has received every benefit and privilege there are, there is, for them to come up and say, okay, we're oppressed. Okay, you got every benefit and every privilege that's on the book. So what are you talking about? So they have to attach themselves to us. That's why whenever they have a march, whenever they have a movement, we are the mascots. They have to make us the mascots. So the, the early first wave of white feminists, Susan B. Anthony and all these people, Elizabeth Cant, all these people, they had to get women like Sojourner Truth and prop them up. Like, okay, look at this slave woman. This slave woman suffering is just like us suffering. Us suffering as women. Those early white feminists were racist as shit. Those early white feminists were racist as hell. They were behind a lot of those lynchings. It was the white feminists that was, was doing the rally and cry for brothers to get lynched like that. So they like to get Sojourner Truth and use her ain't that ain't I a woman speech. They, yeah, they got Sojourner Truth and she did a speech called Ain't I a Woman. And this is the finesse that they've been using even back then. Let, let me pull up that speech. Hold on. Let me, let me pull up the Ain't I a Woman speech. Hold on. Let's pull it up real quick. We're going to learn. And I talked about this before. With Sojourner Truth, Ain't I a Woman speech. Hold on. Ain't I a woman. Okay, so they got Sojourner Truth. The Ain't I a Woman speech. And tried to flip it into a feminist credo. Okay, there's different versions of it. Okay, this is one gauge in her. This brings my soul to you. Okay. Okay. The ain't, this is the ain't I, this is the piece of the ain't I a woman speech that the white feminists like propping up. Because when, when Sojourner Truth was saying ain't I a woman, what she was talking about was racism. She wasn't talking about gender. Because they were the, the white women were up there doing this speech and she was like, well shit, ain't I a woman? How come I ain't how come I'm getting treated differently? She's like, ain't I a woman? Meaning I do hard work and I do all this stuff. I'm a woman and none of y'all are really helping me, the men or the women. Y'all ain't helping me. I'm a woman. And if y'all talking about all these women's rights, where are my rights? Period. Where are any of my rights? As a black person, that's what she was really saying. They were they flipped that for their narrative. That's what the ain't I a woman speech was about. It was really about race. Do you think Sojourner Truth gave a damn about some gender back then? She in slavery and black men are in slavery. You think she gave a damn about somebody's gender? The speech was about race. But they flipped it. And that's what the white supremacists do. They always flip it. This woman was enslaved with black men. We both in, in plantations. So she was telling, it was really directed at the white feminists. Like, hey, I'm a woman. Ain't I a woman? How come y'all ain't, you know, ain't treating me the same? Y'all ain't treating me the same as you. I'm a woman. All this is supposed to be about women and women's rights. Where, I'm a woman. Where are my rights? And she was like, y'all bitches, that's who I'm talking to. This ain't about no gender. And even in the speech, when, when you read it, it's like, wall chilling, wall down, there's so much racket, there must be some out the door. I think that twixt the niggas, the South, the women's be up in the North. So they, they wrote her speech with all this plantation talk. I, I've got to go to the door. I can't till the cotton. The thing is, Sojourner Truth didn't talk like that. Sojourner Truth didn't talk like that. Sojourner Truth was from the North. Understand, there was slavery in the North. We forget about that. Sojourner Truth was from the North. She wasn't from the South, so she wouldn't talk like that. She was like from somewhere upstate New York. Not only that, not only did she not talk about that, not only was she from the North, the woman spoke Dutch until she was like, what, nine or 10 years old. Where the fuck would she talk like, oh, I, I am so tired, I, I got to go to Selma, I spent blood in Selma. They got her talking like John Lewis. 
So Journey Truth was fluent in Dutch. She lived in the North, so she wouldn't even talk like that. She didn't talk like that. Yeah, she spoke Dutch until she was um, like nine or 10 years old. And then she learned English from people in the North. They always got to do that with us. It got us talking slavery and crazy. Got her talking plantation babble. Got to sound like Jesse Lee Peterson. I sure find some troubles. The troubles is all up in here, in the down in the South, and I feel it on the planet. Stop. Please. Yeah, she, she knew how to read. She wouldn't talk like that. This woman knew how to read. She was literate. She knew how to read. She was literate. She knew how to read. She spoke Dutch until she was like eight or nine years old. She lived in the North. There's no way she would have talked like that. Lord Jesus, have mercy. Lord, I just going to fix some grits and some harmony biscuits while I looks at the winnings being treated better than me. Lord. Man, man, man. Lord. But again, that, that shows the racism of those white goddamn feminists. That's how racist they were back then. They had to make her sound inferior to them because understand, we have to understand, during slavery, even though it was illegal for many of us to read, we still made a way. Understand, there was a lot of white people who were illiterate back then. A lot of white immigrants coming over, they were illiterate, they couldn't read, they couldn't write, so they would talk that dumb shit. 